All right, everybody. This is uh, <laughs> this is a fun episode. Uh, I got like a very uh, super cool, awesome guest this time. Um, <laughs> Scarlet Spitfire, welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Happy to join tonight. This is uh, this is fun because you are a very <laughs> you put yourself out there in like in a lot of different ways, and like you have like that that name. Scarlet Spitfire, and it's <laughs> it's something to be like admired. Like uh, first, first off, I got a lot of questions for you tonight. But like, first <laughs> off, where did that name come from? Oh, um, about six years ago now, my best friend and I decided that we were really going to jump into the cosplay modeling world. That we were going to. Um, really promote ourselves that way so we decided to change our names and in doing so we were like well what could we come up with at the time i was a redhead <laughs> hence the scarlet part <laughs> um but the spitfire really came because it harkens back to kind of the pinup days you know the spitfire um air airplanes and stuff but also i'm a little bit of a spitfire myself <laughs> i think like I like to have fun. I like to be a feisty Latina. I like to, um, you know, push buttons sometimes, but I also like to have a good time. You, <laughs> you're always on. I like it. You, uh, <laughs> and you, you do um, put yourself out there. Like you are like all those things that you just called out. And <laughs> like, um, I'm, I'm trying to like to, to tiptoe around saying it, but I feel like I need to just say it. like you <laughs> you are like a, also an OnlyFans like a personality like you you put like lewds or news or however like, like you you describe it you put that out there for the world to see was that was that like a, a easy transition for you to make or was it difficult? Um, you know, it's something that kind of as my confidence grew in modeling and in cosplay, as my understanding of uh, sexuality as an art form uh, started to grow as I got older and more aware of myself, who I am, what I want, what I care about, what I don't care about. Um, I just started kind of pushing those boundaries, you know, what some would say socially, I guess, but also personally, you know, I wanted to see like, what do I feel comfortable with? what do I want to do? What don't I want to do? What do I want to do that I don't, that I can say later on, I didn't miss out on, right? You know, that I <laughs> had a chance in life where I got to do some fun things and create all kinds of content. And, you know, I don't, I never wanted to look back at my life and be like, oh, well, I wish I could have done something like that. Or even look back at it kind of in a judgmental kind of way, because that goes around a lot right now, especially with this kind of um, material, people get very judgmental or don't understand um, differing perspectives on things. So being the spitfire that I am, I too like to kind of push that in people's faces a little bit and say like, what you may think is wrong or you have such a problem with really is not that big of a deal and has been right under your noses the whole time anyway. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> like for, for a very long time, yeah. And uh, Forever. <laughs> and since you are Latina, um, like I, I know like in, uh, in certain like, like uh, Latinx communities, putting yourself out there in that, in that certain way can be frowned upon also like amongst family. Like is it, has that been a problem for you amongst your family or like do you not worry about things like that? Um, no, not really. Uh, they can take it or leave it kind of wow, in my, nice. and well, it's true, right? Any, anybody, uh, you have to have that kind of attitude with, or else you're going to be censoring yourself in ways that you don't even realize, you know, you, you start self self-censoring and, um, based on other people's opinions, I just watched a, a clip. I might've posted it to my stories. I don't remember of Prince saying he was talking about music, but he said, the music is a success the moment we make it. And it starts to become a failure or seen as a failure when other people start to critique it. Mm. And that really struck me. And I feel like that applies to so many different forms of art. Prince himself, who pushed many boundaries, especially yeah. when it came to sexuality, um, 
so yeah most of my family is pretty accepting of it or they just don't think about it or don't talk about it <laughs> they know not to talk about it pretty much, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well it seems like you got like, a good handle when it comes to that in your family that's awesome and uh yeah. you do you did talk about like like the pinup days the pinup era like you like in your earlier career of doing cosplay and doing like, like the photographs that you have you did have uh, a very like a vintage 1940s mm. uh betty page kind of look to you like uh mm -hmm. As as time has grown, like you have changed that tone to yourself. Is there a reason why, like you you left? I guess I should say, like the Rocky Bill the Rocky Billy era, and like got more horror esque. Um, maybe I got lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty high lot. maintenance being in that world. No, I get well, it. Yeah, it's a lot. It's the hair, the makeup, everything. It is a lot, but also, you know, I think my taste changed a little bit as I got older and as I got to um exposure to different things and I um I, I grew up with my grandparents so I always had that kind of vintage influence in my life so it's something I I will always hold dear to it's kind of like my my um my wheelhouse right wow. I can pull out pinup like that because it's natural to me it's something I've done my whole life like the back of your hand yeah that's right but that being said when you do something your whole life, sometimes it's fun to branch out into other things. Because <laughs> monotony can, uh, monotony's, monotony's thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a full blown thing. No, I get that. <laughs> and uh, um, I've been asking this more and more of like of cosplayers I have on the show and like and musicians really, but uh, you've done a lot of different cosplays. You've done like Poison Ivy, <laughs> you've done like Ghostbusters, Star Trek, mm -hmm. which is like a personal favorite, mind you. Uh, <laughs> you've also done like uh, like the, the, the hardcore horror stuff. You've done Velma, which, you know, like is always like a crowd favorite. Is mm -hmm. there any favorite cosplay that you've done that like that's just like, you know, I love this. This is my top pinnacle. No one can tell me otherwise if they like it or not because I am in love with this cosplay. Like, <laughs> is, there, is there one like that for you? <laughs> okay. So there, uh, there, it's split because my absolute favorite feeling I've ever had in a cosplay was putting on that Ghostbusters jumpsuit and proton pack. There, you you never feel more like a Ghostbuster in your life than when you have the uniform on. Right. And I am a huge, huge Ghostbusters fan. Um, always have been. It holds a very special place in my heart. So that that cosplay in particular almost feels less like a cosplay and like an actual uniform I put on when needed. Damn, dude. Wow, you are hardcore with those stuff. I know, wow. I love it. Um, <laughs> which cosplay do I have the most fun in at cons? Um, <clears throat> or that maybe is received with more like excitement in a certain way is my Ash, my Evil Dead cosplay. That one gets a lot of attention because the blood and the and the the shotgun and the chainsaw hand and everything. And that just, that gets you just look like a badass, man. Like, I love it. I love it. it. It's kind of split. Like the kids and the people who are into Ghostbusters love that one. They they get it. They love it. And then the older adults, the horror the horror fans, they love the the Ash cosplay. Right on. I'm all for the ash. Like, uh, like seriously, like, you just you <laughs> look like it. a bona fide badass. Like you like you're gonna like mess some things up in that costume for sure. Don't try me. <laughs> right there it is. There it is. <laughs> uh, you still got cons that you're going to. You still got people that you're hanging out with. I know, like you're uh, you're you're cool with Jen. Say what? I see her in like mm -hmm. a lot of photographs of yours. Uh, you have been doing this for six years. Mm -hmm. uh, what's what's next for you? Um. Well, for those of you that are in the horror kind of community, there's a puzzle company called Messed Up Puzzles. I actually have a sticker, happen to have a sticker right here. Um, I'm going to be working with them for some promotion stuff, doing themed photos based on their puzzles. Nice. So lots of Elvira, some more Ash. They have some um, creep show in there. Just so, so excited for that. Um, the gruesome magazine podcast, the family of podcasts that it has, is really growing. We have one called heroes and droids that focuses on, uh, the pop culture side of things. So that one focuses like on Disney plus the star Wars stuff. And with book of Boba Fett coming out, I'm so <laughs> excited to talk about that. 
You're just um, you're just a well-rounded nerd, like all well, all spectrums of it, man. Right I'm on. Right. You know what? I'm I am a, a Jill of all trades. Right on, I'm dude. Master yes, of none. master of none. That's <laughs> true. Right that's what I'm talking about. See, that's it. You're a cool, dude. Definitely, bar none. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were cool when you had like, like the the white hair. Like, yeah, oh, this, this yeah. Cute, cute cool dude. There. Definitely, it's is it? <laughs> it's oh, exciting. very cool. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you, you are definitely a well-rounded, like, nerd, nerd, hardcore. That's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> this has been fun. Like, I got, I got one more question for you. I ask this question to everybody. And um, <laughs> I, I don't know how you're going to take it, but, like, a lot of people get emotional when I ask this question. But you've been okay. doing this since I saw your first post was 2012 on Instagram. You've been doing this for a long time. You got 8,000 followers right now on, on Instagram alone. I haven't checked your other platforms. I'm going to pull you up there, but uh, you got a lot of people who have your back, a lot of people who follow you, a lot of people who love your work. What would you want to say to those people who've been like hanging out with you and doing this with you this entire time? Oh man, I have the best fans and followers and peers. I have been so fortunate, knock on wood, that I have not fallen into that trap of just getting nasty comments all the time or getting nasty messages all the time or getting my posts taken down or, or just being faced with a lot of the negativity that we can see in social media as it is. Um, I have been so fortunate that I have been able to cultivate a following and also find a following that understands I'm a huge dork. <laughs> you can't take me so seriously. Like the facade is one thing and the deep inside is a huge nerd. So my followers, I think, see that. And if you like that, you're into that, we're going to have fun and we're going to laugh and we're going to be silly and sexy and it's going to be great. And if you're not, then you're not going to follow me or I'm going to block you <laughs> if you're going to be a jerk. So I have, I, absolutely love I love my friends in this community they have been so supportive and helpful we have grown so much together through different stages of our cosplay life you know we're talking about Jenna say what but also um Charlie Rocket yeah. you know, I love her so much she um, is fun isn't she man she crazy. knows how to have a good time man yeah <laughs> I love her so much and it's just you know it's just a really really great community around here when you find the right people and yeah, I can only hope that I can continue to be so successful on social media in such a kind of like safe way almost. <laughs> I like it. You uh <laughs> you stand you stand for Black Lives Matter, you stand for like people standing up against injustice. You mm -hmm. are you are a very proud Latino woman. You are very mm -hmm. awesome in many different ways. Uh the words you just said are very meaningful, very thoughtful and I hope whomever's listening to it really got like, you know, the feels right now, because mm -hmm. not only do you put yourself out in like the most awesome, hot way possible, you still like, <laughs> you still are a very humble down to earth person. So like for me personally, like keep being you, keep doing what you're doing, because I, I am here for it. You have oh. seen me like, like hounding your page. I, I'm here for your work. <laughs> your stuff is always awesome. And I'm always here for it. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for being on the show. Where can people find you? Oh, well, Instagram is my most active platform. Um, so it is Scarlet with two T's underscore Spitfire. Um, and then if you go to my bio, you'll find all my links on there. I've done lots of different social medias, lots of different kind of platforms with all kinds of different content. And if you guys do like OnlyFans, she does have like a, a free OnlyFans mm -hmm. and like and a paid OnlyFans. So have fun. <laughs> have a... <laughs> yes, I have a Disney trip in January. <laughs> oh, oh, that sounds like that sounds like a recipe for fun or disaster. I don't know which one that Ooh, is. But... We'll have to circle back around after my trip. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that. I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> nerd to nerd, I got you on that one. Absolutely. Uh, this has been the FTO Nerd Talk. Uh, <laughs> Scarlet Spearfire SS. Thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me. Had a blast. Until next time. <laughs> Bye.